Hi guys, today I'm taking a look and giving my experiences and thoughts on the PlayStation 5 12 months on after getting it. And I'll include links for all the items I'll be showing in the description together with purchasing links. Now getting hold of one of these consoles has been a real challenge from day one with all the scalpers not helping the situation by buying as many consoles as they can and selling at more than double the retail price. The PlayStation 5 comes in two forms. One version has a disk drive costing $499 in the US and $400. $49.99 in the UK and the version without the disk drive costs $399.99 in the US or $359.99 in the UK and if you're wondering if you can get away with buying an external disk drive and use that on the diskless version well unfortunately that's not possible as a console software locks that capability. Choosing between the two really depends on whether you can live without the disk drive as you may already have a collection of disk based games for the PS4 or even Blue ray discs which can be played on the console. One of the advantages of the disc version is that buying the disc allows you to sell off the games after you've finished playing with them if you no longer wanted them. But if you buy the digital version of the game you'll have it forever. Personally I went with the disc version as there's more flexibility with this one. When I first unboxed the PS5 I couldn't believe the size and the look of it. It looks completely different from the previous PlayStation consoles and initially I did think it was a bit of a beast in size. Coming in at 15.5 4 inches in height, 4.09 inches in width and 10.2 inches in depth. It weighs in at 9.9 pounds and this I thought would definitely be something that would stand out considerably on a TV unit and I really wasn't that keen on the design at first but it has grown on me now and I do feel it has an ultra cool next gen design to it. There's even the PlayStation icons subtly put onto the side plates which look awesome but I didn't feel the color combo of the white side plates and black mid look that good. So I decided to change the side plates by adding the dark plates which give a matte black finish and matte black middle skin from D brand. I also thought it'd be pretty cool to add an RGB strip light kit to the console to allow you to have custom colors on the front and this particular kit was from Extreme Rate and honestly both these mods were really easy to do. Aesthetically the matte black finish looks so good and really how the console should have looked in the first place. Now moving on to the new DualSense controller this was something I was really excited about. It's not only bigger than the PS4 controller, but has more features, making this a good upgrade. They've included a built-in mic, speaker, haptic feedback, and adaptive triggers. This is a huge jump from the PS4 controller and provides a very different gaming experience. I love the detail on it. So coming in close, you can see the PlayStation icons on the grips. The adaptive triggers bring a real next-gen feature to the controller with the tension and resistance on the trigger buttons. This is especially true in shooting games and I really love the feel and the real immersive gameplay with it. It's not just a rumble like on the PS4 controller but it reacts to what you're doing in the game and feels so different like feeling the vibration when you're walking or driving over different surfaces. For example in Dirt 5 with the terrain and hitting the sides of the barrier you can feel this through the controller and even when you're shooting a gun or a rifle in Fortnite or Cold War the adaptive triggers change depending on the type of weapon you're using providing some real resistance like an elastic band but as soon as you fire the resistance goes. The DualSense controller is definitely a major game changer on the PS5 and the best controller I've ever used. It's a real next gen feature. The touchpad on the controller works really well and to be honest I haven't used it for anything other than Astro's Playroom. The built-in mic and speaker is good especially if you haven't got a headset and it does work really well. I like the fact it has a USB type C port and comes with a charging cable to charge it but you can use any USB type C cable to charge it. I also bought the PlayStation charging dock to charge my controllers and I've also got the Nexigo battery pack which is really handy to charge the controller while gaming and it isn't too big and small enough that it doesn't interfere with the feel and the weight of the controller. When the PS5 was first released the only color for the controller was white so I decided to get another controller in matte black from Colorware to match my D brand dark plates but after getting my black controller from Colorware PlayStation announced they were releasing two new colors for the DualSense controller and they were the midnight black and and cosmic red. Both colors look really good. Now if you press and hold the PS icon button on the controller take you straight into the dashboard screen which is pretty easy. Something that I'd like to see is if you single click it 
could bring up the menu and long pressing just turns the console off like we see on the Xbox. Let's talk about the internal storage on the PS5, which is less than the Xbox Series X and the PS4 Pro with only 825 gigabytes of internal storage, which equates to about 667 gig of true console storage available for you to use, which isn't really much. You've got a couple of expansion options. First up is just plugging in an external USB drive. And initially when the console was first released, this was limited to just PS4 games. But eventually, Sony did unlock this and allow you to move off PS5 games onto the external hard disk. But you're not allowed to play them off the drive. You can only play PS4 games from it. A minimum of 250 gigabytes and maximum of 8 terabytes capacity is supported with an external drive. Initially, there was no option to install an M.2 SSD in the internal bay. But 10 months on, Sony unlocked this functionality but this should have been made available from the date the console was released. So I bought the WD Black M2 one terabyte SSD together with a heat sink. And this was pretty simple to install. And I'll include a card in the corner if you wanted to check out how to do that. With the internal M.2 SSD games can be moved from the console storage onto it and played directly from there. Loading wise, it's pretty much the same, but means I can have more storage to have many more games on the console without having to delete or move off onto an external USB drive. There's a minimum of 250 gigabytes and a maximum of four terabytes supported for this type of storage. Interface wise, PlayStation did make a change and updated its interface compared to Xbox's user interface, which has stayed the same. Now I'm not saying this is a major game changer and there isn't anything wrong with the Xbox's UI, but the PlayStation's one does look fresh, clean, simple, and is quick to load. The picture is now in 4K and you can really notice the difference as the picture quality is sharp and menus look really good. The dashboard is easy to navigate around too. On the controller, if you tap the P PS icon, it will bring up a quick menu across the bottom of the screen, which is pretty cool as you can jump between the different options or the different settings. So you don't need to keep returning to the home screen. The only thing I didn't like was the removal of the folders option, which is when you could group games together, which was pretty convenient, but this isn't a big deal breaker. And I do like the dashboard. Plus when selecting a game, it fills out the entire screen. And I like the fact you can customize the control center icons too. Now onto gaming. And to be honest, this will be the main reason why you'd be buying the console as you have a selection of exclusive games for it and you may be swayed by which games you play with your mates too. I'm a big fan of Gran Turismo and I'm really looking forward to the release of Gran Turismo 7. Spider-Man Miles Morales is another exclusive title which is what I got with the console together with Demon's Souls. It's definitely worth getting a TV that supports 4K at 120 hertz to make the most of the console. I've got the LG C1 which supports this. Gaming on the console is just amazing. The graphics are so smooth and clarity is just stunning. It just blows your mind. I've played a lot of Dirt 5 and it's quicker and better on the PS5 than on the PS4. The graphics are awesome and at 120 hertz, it just looks amazing. And if you owned a Logitech G29, then that's also compatible with the console, which is great news. I've also played a lot of Fortnite where I found the graphics are much more detailed. You can also play a lot of PS4 games on the PS5, which is great as you can take your PS4 collection across with you. Moving on to the PlayStation subscription, you've got the PlayStation Plus, which is a must, which lets you unlock hundreds of digital games across PS2, PS3, PS4, and PS5, instead of buying the disc version of the games. But remember, games are only available while the PlayStation Plus subscription is active. When you stop paying, you'll lose access to the games. Now, let me run through some of the features I think PS5 is missing. Number one, there's no quick resume feature. And this is something you get with the Xbox Series X that allows you to jump between games without needing to close them or quit and save. You can actually jump straight between games quickly within five or six seconds and you're straight into the next one and it will resume exactly where you left it. I love this on the Xbox and not sure why PlayStation didn't add this onto their console as it's really a good feature to have. But nevertheless, you can't knock the speed and smoothness of the PS5, which is effortless. Number two, there's no 1440p resolution support for gaming monitors. Number three, there's no variable refresh rate support. However, I have read a few rumors that there may be the variable refresh rate update to the PS5 in December this year. Number four, there's no backwards compatibility beyond PS4 games compared to the Xbox, which goes all the way back into the Microsoft 
library of games, which is not limited to Xbox One, but supports Xbox 360 and Xbox original games. This is where I think the PlayStation has missed a real opportunity and where Xbox has done really well. So in summary, 12 months on, with the PlayStation 5, and I can honestly say I'm not disappointed. A true next-gen gaming console that's taken gaming to the next level with its stunning graphics and amazing performance, together with an awesome DualSense controller with its adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. Is it still worth getting? I'd say definitely, as long as you can find somewhere to buy it from. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed my video on the PS5 12 months later, and it's helped to some extent if you're thinking of getting it. Details for all the items I've shown are in the description below, including purchasing links. Drop me a comment and let me know what you really love about the PS5 and which games you'd play. If you're new to the channel, I hope you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to be informed of my next release. And don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps me out. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.